must be some frontal lobe damage. You're awake. How about that? Oh, I am indeed, Doc. Right, let's uh, let's get this started, shall we? Okay, so we're going to be playing our character called Bastard McFucker. Yep, it fits. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to play as a male character. Obviously, we call the character Bastard McFucker, so it'd be a bit weird if it was female. Uh, I'm not really going to mess around a huge amount with any of the facial stuff. We will, however, change the hairstyle and we will change the facial hair. So I'm going to go with Bass Black and we'll have... I think Mutton Stash. Yeah, I, I want to play him as a sort of uh, a grizzled guy who's seen some stuff. He's been around for a while. He's experienced a few things in life. And, yep, I'm happy well, with that. I got most of it right anyway. Stuff that mattered. How did you surgically okay. change my facial hair? No sense keeping you in bed anymore. Explain that. Okay, so before we go see Doc Mitchell and do the uh, character creation setup and all that kind of stuff, let's just explain how we want to do this. Now, I want to play a kill everyone run, and that is the primary rule of this run. I want to kill every single person in the wasteland. So the backstory behind that is, Bastard McFucker here, we're, uh, we're going to be playing him as ex-member of the NCR, who was shot in the head previously, and decided to become a courier to get over the PTSD. And now he's been shot in the head again, and he's had just about enough as he can fucking take. So we're going to go and slaughter the entirety of the wasteland. Now, that's the kill everyone part of the run. There's another part of the run I'm thinking about called the shotgun diplomacy idea that I've, I've sort of come up with. And pretty much the idea is I don't want to engage in diplomacy. I don't want to talk to people wherever I possibly can. So we will be doing everything we possibly can to avoid talking to people. Now, New Vegas is a game very much based around diplomacy. So that's going to be slightly difficult. But I'll explain how we're going to do all that when we get into Good Springs, because that's actually quite a good way to explain how the majority of this is going to work. Oh, and I should also throw out there, um, this is just for fun. It's not a challenge run. It's not a, It's not meant to be played by a strict rule set. If one cave in the Mojave has not been sterilized, I'm not too bothered. This is just for shits and giggles, so let's get started. And here's our character setup. Now, I'm going to keep strength at five, just as standard. Uh, perception I've put to six because there's a couple of perks I would like to take fairly early on that relates to perception. Uh, endurance I'd like to crank up, but we're just going to wing it on 5. Charisma is a dump stat, as always. Intelligence at 9. I will try and find a way to boost that to 10 later on. Agility of 7 and luck of 7. I want to kind of go for a, a high vats, high critical build. So that is going to be our character setup. Huh. Must be some frontal lobe damage. You know, it's really nice of Doc Mitchell to just let me into his house, you know, spend 3 or 4 days patching me up and, and then just lets me steal everything he has. What a nice man. Okay, and my skills. We're not going to need speech for the entire run. We're not going to use survival. Um, we're going to put guns up. Uh, I'm going to keep melee weapons up just so I can sort of conserve ammunition where I can. And one of the main skills I need tagging is lockpick. I have a plan and we'll get onto that shortly. And we are going to take four eyed um, because that's probably one of the best uh, sort of starting traits you can take. And for for shotgun diplomacy, there's not really anything else I really would quite like to take, so I think we're just going to leave it on that at the minute. All right, I guess that about does it. Come with me, I'll see you out. All right, come on, see me out, Doc. Let's get this done with. As soon as I get out of the front door, I can actually start implementing all of my plans and start getting this run moving. Ooh, hat. Oh, and also we'll be playing on uh, on normal mode because I don't really want to be playing hardcore. That's just something that's uh, going to add more pain in the ass than I can be bored dealing with. So, let's get ourselves outside. And that's the last of the DLC load then. Now, like I said, I'm going to use Good Springs as an example of how I want to do the shotgun diplomacy uh, sort of part of this challenge. But first off, Doc Mitchell talked to me and that is an offence. Hey Doc, looks like frontal lobe damage mate. Or maybe slightly more than frontal lobe damage. Hmm. Well, at least we made a decent mess with our first kill. That's what I'm looking for. Why can't I search Doc Mitchell? What is this? Yeah, depressing. I'm sure he's got stim packs on him. Ah well, next. So, like I said, Doc Mitchell talked to me and that is an offence. Now, the way we're going to run this is... There's going to be three different kinds of targets I'm going to consider in this. The first one is just going to be regular kill everyone targets. So, an example of this is going to be Easy Pete over here, surrounded by his favourite pet tumbleweeds. Now, Easy Pete is not going to talk to me. He's not going to attempt to engage in diplomacy unless I talk to him. And because of the rule set, I obviously cannot do that. So, he's just part of the kill everyone rule set. I don't have to kill him right this second. It doesn't have to be instantaneous. 
bots, I'm going to dip them out of the way now and just deal with them. Just, just so we haven't got to put off them later. Oh, easy Pete just took that to the face. Wow. Oh, never mind. That's easy Pete taken care of. He made a fantastic blood splatter across that wall, easy Pete. Fair play. So, that is a kill everyone target. Regular people who are not going to try and talk to me, but we're going to just kill them because we have to. Now, the next one I want to go on to is evasive diplomacy. Now, there's, there's certain points in the game where you have people try and run at you, and you can avoid that diplomacy by using particular methods. So, for example, Sunny Smiles, as soon as I walk in the front door of the Prospector Saloon, is going to instantaneously talk to me. I can't avoid that diplomacy if I walk in the front door. But if I go in the back door, I can. And now we're in the back door. If I walk around there, she will in fact engage me in diplomacy. But if I just walk around here, take this shotgun, put it between this guy's teeth and blow his head across the back wall like a painting. Oh, there we go. One shot to serve me some ammunition. Yep, Sonny is now pissed off with me. Just, 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 uh, hold still for one second. Oh, Lord, Shine, what happened to your eyeballs? Oh, well, put you out your misery. Bad Shine, come back here. There we go. The head goes tumbling. Ow. Oh, and I'm vilified. Vilified by Good Springs already. I've only killed three, four, f five, five people. Losing count already. Ah, quest field. We've seen that a lot. I'm just going to quickly rinse everything I can out of the Prospector Saloon because there's stuff in here and I want to be making money by the end of this part. Like I said, there's a plan. Let's just get through the idea of uh, how it's going to run through Good Springs and then once we've got beyond Good Springs, I'll explain a bit more. Is that a ghost bark? I've killed a dog. Oh, you've, you've, you've turned up. Nice. If you, don't hand Ringo over you, are, you guys are aware you're sitting in the remains of the dog in the Prospector, right? Got it. We'll keep that in mind. Apparently, no, no one cares. You're not gonna buy something? Get out. And Jill Cobb, you're not gonna talk to me either, but because you're here, I may as well just take the shot now. Oh, fantastic! Two shot kill. Trudy, don't run for me. Trudy, you can't run. Well, you can run, but the bullets are faster. Come on, Trudy, follow me. Ooh, magazine. Come on, if you come around this way, I can get you in the nice meat pile. About there. Right. Okay. Please die on the shot. There we are. Vil How did I get vilified by the powder gangers for shooting Trudy? Not going to question it. We just, we'll just leave it as it is. Okay, so that was an example of evasive diplomacy. Now, the majority of the evasive diplomacy in this game is pretty much just going to be me pulling a sniper rifle out and just blowing their head off at range so they can't actually get into range to talk to me. But there are going to be some people that I can't get away with. So the next one I want to go on to is an example of what I'm going to call forced diplomacy. Uh, so in this building here, Ringo is stood behind the door and the moment I walk in, he's going to engage me in diplomacy. Now, like I said earlier on, kill everyone is the priority. The, the shotgun diplomacy is a secondary. I'm much happier to go in here and engage in diplomacy and then shoot him immediately afterwards. So that's pretty much the plan. If we get involved in diplomacy, that person must instantaneously die. Okay, no if ands, or buts. Fuck the consequences. It doesn't matter if we're sitting in the Brotherhood of Steel bunker and we talk to someone and there's 50 paladins surrounding us. We just go in guns blazing. And, yeah, hope to fuck that we survive. So let's use Ringo as an example of that. That's close enough. So we just get through his conversation, just tell him how to look around, and say goodbye to him. And then we pull the shotgun out and walk up behind him. Blow his head clean off. Ooh, not quite, nearly. There we go, he's dead now. Your head didn't come off. There we go, that's better. Oh, also, just while I'm doing this, I should point out that shotgun diplomacy does not mean we have to use shotguns. It can be any weapon. Shotgun diplomacy is just a name. Okay, so those are three examples. Kill everyone people. We have evasive diplomacy people like Sonny. Uh, other examples of that will be like NCR Rangers, Legion Hit Squads, Malcolm Holmes, whenever I see him, will be getting killed instantaneously because I hate the asshole. Uh, and the force diplomacy, well, there's your example there. There's Ringo. Uh, when I walk into Prim, uh, into the Vicky Vance, Jonathan Nash is going to do the exact same thing. Uh, and I'm going to have to kill him instantaneously. And the other nine people in the casino probably won't like that very much. So we'll see how that goes. But while I'm here, we're just going to quickly take care of all the settlers. Oh, lovely. Save me a bit of ammunition there. I'll tell you what, this caravan shotgun is absolutely abysmal. No, no, Chet, don't run for me. Has Chet actually ever been outside the Goosebring store? I've never seen him outside before. This is a new experience to me. 
Chet, don't run for me. Chet, nothing can stop me. All of your friends are dead. And soon you will be too. Hey, Victor. Don't don't worry about what's going on here. Just chasing down the store owner. Oh, I'm sorry, Chet. You were not. That was not the target. Um, damn, I ran out of ammunition. I'll tell you what. Chet's determined to run. Let's stop that from happening. He ain't going nowhere now. Oh, dramatic death for Chet. Okay, so the last things I need from Good Springs. Um, we're going to need to kill Victor. There's no more named characters. I've just got to go kill all the field hands, and I've got to go kill all the big corners. And that is pretty much it, so we'll get that out of the way real quick. Don't worry, Victor, I'm just culling all the livestock. Don't you do anything to save this town in any way. You know, at this point, Victor really is like the cause of all this because if he hadn't pulled me out of the ground, I would, I would technically still be there and everyone in Good Springs would still be alive. But they're not. Right, Victor, you're my last target. Okay, so Victor, the last person in the entirety of Good Springs I think that is alive. I'm fairly sure I've killed everything else. Oh, and before I go on to that, let's just look at my settings real quick. Uh, I am playing on hard mode. I'm not playing on very hard because I don't want enemies to take, like, you know, 10 to 15 rounds each to kill. And I do have the, the uh, courier stash installed. Now, I know people think that's cheating, but like I said earlier on, this is, this is a fun run. It's just for giggles. If the game is going to give me a grenade launcher, I'm going to damn well use it. Okay, so... We are using all that, and that's the difficulty we're playing at. Now, Victor, let's take care of you. Also, taking out uh, Victor with a machete is actually quite a sensible idea, because you save the ammunition, you would burn from just shooting him constantly, because he's a tough old fucker. He will, uh, he will take all of your ammunition and some. Oh, my health is looking particularly bad right now. I probably should have uh, bound my stim packs to a hotkey. That would have been sensible. There we go. Right, okay, he's nearly dead. Not much more to do. Just keep smacking him with a machete. In the back, in the back, go on the, go down Victor. Ah, there we go. Right. Good Springs is cleared. Not a single thing is left breathing. Just like I wanted it. Now. Oh, level up, even better. Right, okay, what do we have? Right, lockpick, we're cranking that up. Now, like I said earlier on, I have a plan. Um, because the weapons I have right now aren't particularly powerful. By the end of this part, we are going to be absolutely armed to the teeth. I have a plan that I'm going to enact very soon. Also, if I'm going through this quite quickly, it's because I want to try and fit all of my setup into the first part of this. Uh, so bear with me if it seems a little bit quick and sort of on the fly. Uh, also, Swift Learner, we're going to take that for the experience points where we can. Um, mainly because, like I said earlier on, we can't talk to people, so we can't really go to the New Vegas Medical Clinic later on and ask them for uh, the implants. So we're just going to try and off-balance it a little bit with Swift Learner. Uh, also... Going around Good Springs real quick, I'm just going to loot everything I possibly can, uh, and I'm going to check all the mailboxes as well, because I really need to find myself a locksmith's reader. That's It's not essential, but I'd very much like to have one uh, for a part of the game later on. I say later on, in the next sort of half hour, 45 minutes, I'll be where I need it. Come on, please just have one locksmith's reader. Yes! Oh, thank God. Okay, I'm glad I got that in Good Springs. That's, uh, that's important for later on. Okay, so while I head down to Prim, uh, and Good Springs has been fully cleared, and I've got everything I need, we're going to explain a couple more rules. So I've decided that if a character is immortal, and I physically can't kill them, they are okay to talk to. Now, people that's affect in the game uh, are people like the Sink, that's actually not killable, the Commissary in the Lonesome Road, you can't uh, kill that, that vending machine. We'll be able to use Eddie, because you can't kill the robot from the Lonesome Road. The Gunrunner's robot, because it's also immortal. Uh, there's maybe about five people in the game total, or five entities in the game total that will um, that will be able to talk to entirely. So as of that list, uh, that's pretty much my main way of trading uh, when I come to think of it. I'm going to have to rely heavily on the Gunrunner's robot. I'm going to have to use the Commissary in the Lonesome Road quite a bit. Uh, the Sierra Madre's vending machine and the sink are going to be incredibly important to me as well, probably later on in the game. Because, as, like I said, I can't talk to people, so I can't really you know, go and trade things. So we're going to have to use the robots to actually make money, buy stim packs, ammunition, weapons, and that kind of thing. Now, let's make our way down to Prim, and I'm just going to slaughter everyone real quick on the way down there. Now, here we are in Prim. This gentleman from the NCR here, he is going to attempt to run up me and try and talk to me and warn me about Prim. Now, like I said earlier on, the majority of this is going to be done by using a large sniper rifle. Right now, I'm sort of lacking in the sniper rifle department, so the varmint rifle is just going to have to do the job. So if we just take a couple of shots at him, he has absolutely no intention of uh, engaging me in diplomacy in any way. 
Wow, is this thing even like... I've hit you, I know I've hit you because you're hostile. Oh. Is this thing's aim just that bad? Oh, we got some health off. Yeah, it turns out the varmint rifle really not doing the job. Uh, what do we have? Let's get ourselves a 9mm. That's got plenty of ammunition. Excuse me there, sir. Just hold still. I'm going to go right up in your face and blow your head clean off your shoulders. Oh, come on. We were so close. Right, and there we go. So, that is another example of evasive diplomacy. Now, like I said earlier on, the consequences of this is the rest of the NCR in this area are probably going to hate me. And there appears to be a small gecko trying to chew on my arse. Fucking denied, mate. Let's see how Sergeant McGee feels about the current situation developing in Prim. McGee, how do you feel? You know what makes you feel a lot better? A couple of 9mm rounds in your face. And there goes Sergeant McGee. Just burning nine minutes around here. We may as well. That was a terrible death from Lieutenant Hayes. If I shoot you in the head, will your face just go off like a meaty explosion? I'm really hoping so. Oh, we're so close. Let the AP parts recharge a little bit. Yep, keep shooting me, love. See how good that's doing for you. Now she's got the idea and she's trying to run. Unfortunately, it's too late for you. Ah, oh, that's what I wanted. Shunned by the NCR. Brilliant. Okay, cool. Where's uh, where's the corpse, Lieutenant Hayes? Oh, and a level up. Right, cool. Keep cranking everything to lockpick. Now, like I said earlier on, there was a plan here. Uh, we're going to clear Prim first because I need to get another level in before we go to my next location. But all will become apparent very shortly. You know, he's really not looking very threatening right now, but we'll be sorting that out right after we kill her at Prim. So, the Vicky and Vance. The moment I walk in the door, uh, Jonathan Nash is going to try and engage me in diplomacy. He's going to succeed. The moment I get out of the conversation, we shoot him in the head, damn the consequences. So let's go. I don't know what it was brought you to Prim, youngster, but you might want to rethink your plans. Town's gone to hell. Oh, mate, give me a chance. I've only just turned up. Right, come here, Jonathan Nash. I'll turn the light on so you can see the giblets that get thrown around the place a bit better. Fuck you, Jonathan Nash. Oh, see, see, like I said earlier, when um, all the people in here are going to get really, really pissed off me really, really quickly. What am I doing? I've got a cock and grenade launcher. Oh, yep, that's having some good effect. We've lost some of them. They're not all dead yet, though. No, come back here. Did your mother not teach you to entertain guests? Come on, guys. If you could just make it outside and a little bit further away from me so I can fire the last of these, uh, these grenade rounds at you. Ah, there's one of them. And where's the last one? You there, sir. Ooh, he's a tough one. There we go. And you are hereby sentenced to death for felony murder. No, you are sentenced to death for having absolutely no protocols and the inability to actually stop me from what I'm doing. Get my machete out. Slicey, 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 slicey. You see, in essence, that is how the majority of the settlements in the wasteland are going to go. Now, when it comes to things like the Brotherhood of Steel and that, we're going to have to be prepared for that. But I have a plan for all things. And that is the Vicky and Vance officially cleared out. So I've looted all the safes in the back, and now we're going to go across to the Bison Steve and clear that out. And then once we've cleared out the Bison Steve, we'll get on to the part where we arm ourselves to the teeth. Well, that's one way to make an entrance. Come on. You're a little bit close, mate, but you know what? That's defense will save me. Oh, didn't save you though, did it? Yep, I am definitely crippled. That was a stupid idea. Why did I think that was a smart thing to do?
Wow, that overshot, didn't it? And he's dead. Brilliant. Oh, there we go. Right, there's my level 4 that I was saying about earlier. Now, keep cranking everything to lockpick, and that's all we need to keep up right now. Oh, it's at 75. Brilliant. And uh, we are going to take um, Educated at level 4, because it is the best thing to take at level 4. Now... Ah, Deputy Beagle might have been collateral damage. That's unfortunate for him, but it doesn't matter to me because I know where I'm going anyway. And now my lockpick is at 75. I've just went and got lucky. Now, like I said earlier, we're going to be arming ourselves to the teeth. This is not the gun we're using to do that. It just happens to be available to me right now, and I have the ability to get it, so I've went and picked it up. Alright, guys, do you want to just form an orderly queue, please? I'll be with you all momentarily. Oh, Lucky is such a good, reliable weapon. That was a good jump for you there, mate. Well played. You like that? Don't know where you're far into, mate, but fair enough. Right, that is the entire top floor of the Bison Steve taken care of. Nothing has been left breathing. Now we can get on to my next objective. And that is Prim taken care of. So we have cleared uh, Good Springs, we have cleared the road to Good Springs to Prim, and we have now cleared Prim. And that has got me where I need to be. Like I said earlier on, there is a plan. It just took us to the end of Prim to get to it. I'm now high enough level to go after what I want. And like I said, we need to be armed to the absolute teeth. Uh, the, the starting weapons just will not do the job. So I'll meet you at our next location in a minute. Okay, so here we are at our next location. Now, like I said, we want to be armed to the absolute teeth. And I would like to have a lot of large, sort of very powerful guns and some really good armor early on. So we've come to the Divide. Because this is exactly where you want to go at level 4. Obviously the most sensible place you can possibly go to get weapons. Now, like I said earlier, um, immortal characters, I'm considering them to be completely fine to talk to. So Eddie, when I get there out of the pod in a bit, will be completely okay to talk to. So I will go down there, get the robot out of the pod, and go to the commissary, and I'll cut the rest out until we get there. Okay, so here we are. So I've got Eddie out of the, uh, the little pod, and the robot is now going to activate the commissary for me. Like I said earlier on, the commissary is going to be invaluable to me, because it can sell me things, and it can also repair weapons. So let's just sell off everything I don't need and see how much money I can make. Right, and there we go. So I've sold everything I got from the uh, Good Springs and Prim, and we now have 2,400 caps. Now there's going to be more money to be made yet. We're going to clear the commissary out before we actually leave the divide. Uh, it's going to pick up some very specialised stuff I need first. So here's when we start getting to the slightly interesting part. Sentry bots. So there's going to be a couple of them. We're going to have to kill all of them at level four. Now, luckily, this one here I'd like to take care of myself personally because there's a terminal over here, and I do have programmer's digest. So I'm just going to quickly knock that out real fast, and we'll get rid of that sentry bot. And just deactivate that robot. Yep, and that one has given up on life. Cool. Now, in this room, I can't actually remember if it's important or not, but there is a set of uh, hopeful codes in this desk hard locked. I don't know if we need them or not. I honestly can't remember, so I'm just going to get them now anyway while I can. Ooh, Plasma Defender. Nice. Now, here comes the really interesting part. Over that way, there's a sentry bot just behind that missile. Now, the plan I have for this uh, is sort of loosely based around the idea that I'm going to get Eddie to run in and take all the missiles to the face while I run up behind it and stick the sword welder into his arse. So let's just see if that works out. Come on, Eddie. See the big scary robot? Go, go engage the big scary robot. Go on, Eddie. I believe in you. You've totally got this, mate. Just charge him. You've, you've, you've totally... It's fine. It's fine. Let me stab him in the back. Don't, don't turn towards me. Just die. Just... And that's when the game crashed. Right, round two. Let's go. Oh, apparently it's come to me this time. I said, keep distracting it, Eddie. We've totally got this. Ah, there we go. This time, this time without crashing. Ah, oh, New Vegas Shiver to love it. About as stable as a meth addict. I'll just pop in here, get myself uh, some silo codes, and get myself the, uh, the general outfit because it is quite awesome looking. 
Oh, and I'll have your 10 millimeter pistol as well. Now, if you've never played Lonesome Road before, the next section I have to go into is this room here. Now, the moment I do, I'm going to have to pull on that lever. And the moment that happens, there's going to be three sentry bots. I think it's three behind that door. Try and rush into this room, and there's going to be two more that are behind the walls in there that are going to rush out of there into here and try and go into that room as well. I don't want to fight them all at the same time, so my intention is to make it from there, out this door, and engage the two sentry bots by themselves out here. That way I can attempt to at least split the fight up and not fight five sentry bots at level four, because that would just be stupid. Let's see how that goes. This is going to be interesting. I don't know if I'm going to make it through this alive or not, but let's find out. Right. Send it, send it, send it, send it, send it, send it. If I close this door on the way out, does that mean they stay out here? Can sentry bots open doors? I don't know if they can. Well, apparently Eddie can open doors and be a complete pain in my arse and a total nuisance. Why is everything exploding? Okay, this has not gone as planned. Um, right, I'm, I'm going back up top again then. Yep, good try Eddie. I appreciate the effort. Oh, bloody hell I hate sentry bots. Like, don't get me wrong, I know I'm not meant to be here at this level, but... Come on! Just die, just die, just, 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 let me reload and die. Right! I've taken out the two on this side. That's a start. I'm just gonna close this door over. Oh! Yeah, good luck with that, mate. I ain't given up yet. Just keep running, just keep running, just keep running. Ooh. God, I hate sentry bots. That's not the kind of thing I want to hear, mate. Right, if I just... If I can get right up in that one's face, I can probably not get shot by the other ones. Alright, fuck it, wing it. Yep, die, 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 die. Just die. Stop missile me, you assholes! Stop using rockets for everything! Oh my god, that is what you could classify as a pube of health. Bloody hell. You remember earlier on when I said this isn't going to be easy? Yeah, it's, it's really not. Why did I do this? Oh, right, okay, you know what? There's only one sentry ball left. I'm going to try and wing it. Just keep running, just keep running, just keep running, just keep running. Oh, right. I'm back in my safe place. Don't you bloody dare open that door, I swear to fuck. Right, this room. This room's important because it has a whole lot of medical supplies. It has some plasma grenades. It has more medical supplies. But the most important thing in this room is over here. This locker contains one set of slightly damaged US Army combat armor. And that is what is going to save my arse here. Also, these should contain an electron charge pack. And a stealth boy. Well, it's my lucky day. Right, come here, sentry bot. Now I've got armor. And what did that do for you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. See, that is what having the correct armor will do for you at level 4. Ah, there's my level up to level 5. Brilliant. Okay, keep cranking lock pick up. That should hit 90. It has hit 90, and we can put a little bit more into guns then. Cool. Okay, I've got that done. I'm just going to quickly grab all the stuff from here, go down to the commissary, sell it off, and we'll, um, we'll be on our way. Okay, there we go. I've cleared the commissary out at level 5, and I now have 6,000... Is that 6,800 caps? 6,400 caps. Right, we're looking good. Okay, so the next section. Uh, Ulysses is going to talk to me using, uh, using Eddie here, and uh, there's no way I can avoid that in any way whatsoever. Now, this is one of the forced diplomacies. I'm going to let this slide, because... I don't really fancy going all the way to the end of the divide at level 5. That just sounds suicidal, to be truthfully honest. So, uh, I'm probably just going to cut out all Ulysses' dialogue. We will get round to him eventually, though. Ulysses is going to get his when I'm done with him. Now, on to the next section. Okay, there we go. So, that is the first section with the robots taken care of. Now, this next section. Uh, you're going to get in combat constantly, Eddie, because you're a total pain in the arse. But, there's a couple of things in this area I want. Now, like I said earlier, I'm used to be getting arms to the teeth. And this area has everything I could possibly need in it. So first stop, I'm going to go grab the plasma mines over in this corner. And then we're going to move on to the actual weaponry I'm looking for. Right, so I've got the plasma mines I wanted. 
Now, if I can make it to my next area without getting... I was going to say without getting into danger. The moment I said that, it happened. Yeah, I see you down there. I'm going to guess he can't hit me at that range with a tri-beam laser rifle. We might have to go engage in combat. So the thing is, I think at the minute, he's more interested in... Oh, no, I was going to say he's more interested in robot. No, he's not. Come on, Lucky, give me some criticals. Nope, okay, apparently not. Ah, this is the longest reloading gun on the planet. Nope. Go on, Eddie. Oh, thank you, Lucky. Such a good gun. See, it's a good thing I've got fucking Lucky to compensate for your lack of stealth, you stupid fucking robot. Right, on to my next section. That building over there is where I'm going, and if you know what's in there, you roughly know what I'm going to go get in a minute. Now, I'm just going to make the quick run across there, because I have just burned all my stim packs, because ED is an unstealthy arsehole, and has managed to get me involved in combat yet again. Ugh, bloody robots. Right, this door here. Let's break in here before we get uh, caught. Now, where did I put that locksmith's reader? That's what this was for. It's almost like I slightly planned this. Right, from unlocking that door, I've just got a level up, so I'm just going to crack guns up to, uh, to 53, and we are going to take bloody mess, because it is the ultimate thing to use with the stuff I'm about to get. Now, let's get in here. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, oh, cool. Right, for some weird reason, the guy that was uh, outside has decided I'm not actually worth his effort anymore, so we'll leave, it, uh, leave him outside. Now, this is right gear, and this is a right shotgun. Two of some of the best things in the entire game. Uh, the right shotgun, for example, has the highest magazine count of any shotgun in the game. It has the fastest firing rate of any shotgun in the game. It has the lowest amount of AP points used in VATS for any shotgun in the game. This thing is a close combat powerhouse. It will turn your enemies into a fucking carpet stain. Like, no joke, this thing is amazingly good. It also runs with 12 gauge ammunition, which if you know anything about 12 gauge ammo, there's a massive variety of it. You can have uh, regular uh, buckshot, you can have buckshot magnum, you can have pulse slugs, you can have flechette rounds, dragon breath rounds, you can have beanbag rounds. There is a massive, massive quantity of ammo you can have for this shotgun, so it makes it an incredibly diverse weapon. Now, this isn't the only thing I came to the divide for, but it's the main thing. There's a couple more bits and bobs I'm going to see if I can get. Not necessarily what I actually have to get, but I'd like to get them if I can while I'm here. Okay, so the last locations I have to hit in the divide. This building here holds a chance of having a sniper rifle in it. There's no guarantee on that, but there's a chance of it. If not, I know there's another sniper rifle I can get, because I'd like to have a very big rifle by the start of the game. Over that way, red glare. I'm not interested in getting red glare itself, but I do want the detonator so I can go into a room that's a bit over that way because the potential chance people can walk in there later on holding shoulder mounted machine guns and LMGs. And I'd very much like a large sort of rapid fire assault weapon early on in the game. So let's get those three locations hit and hope we find a sniper rifle on the way. Right, unfortunately, mate, that is not a sniper rifle. Um, although I'll take it off your hands anyway. How did you just manage to survive all of that? Come on, right shotgun, do your thing. Oh, there it is. Gotta love the right shotgun. Right, did any of you two have a sniper rifle on you? I've got a trail carbine. That's not a sniper rifle. I'll take it, but it's not a sniper rifle. Hmm, depressing. There appears to be no sniper rifle in this building. Uh, oh, also, if you're looking for the eyewalk parts, there's another one under this desk. Okay, so something I didn't know about. There is a, uh, a safe in this room in the corner that has actually got the access codes for the armory that I just went and got the right shotgun from. So I wouldn't actually have had to use a locksmith's reader at all. I could have just come in here and got that. Then again, saying that, without the right shotgun, getting in here probably would have been a bit difficult. So, you know, if you can make it in here and get it, you don't have to get hard lockpick. But... If you want to do it the slightly easier way, I'd just recommend getting hard lockpick. Because four marked men without right gear is... It's not fun to take on. Right, well, we'll be looking out for all the things that are expensive. Because apparently the, the commissary just keeps spawning money in. I, I'm happy to just keep, like, you know, taking the money off of it. That's, um... Oh, bloody... Oh, for a second I thought that was red glare. It's actually a flare gun. You scared the absolute piss out of me, mate. Come here. 
You brought a flare gun to a right shotgun fight, mate, and that's not going to go well for you. I'm very sorry. Oh, that was a majestic way to go out. Well done. Nicely played. Now, other slight dilemmas. Um, that didn't hold a sniper rifle, so I'm going to have to enact plan B for the sniper rifle getting, which is going to be a little bit difficult. But I do know where there are two more guaranteed spawns. Guaranteed spawns of sniper rifles. So, let's get red glare, get the desert detonator, and then get ourselves a sniper rifle. Oh god, everything's exploding. Keep mining, keep mining, keep mining. I'm so alive. Partially due to a combination of the right gear being absolutely fucking awesome and the fact that red glare is absolutely abysmal as a weapon. Nope. Cease fire. Stop now. Put down the weapon. Oh, right. I'll be taking that because it's worth money and apparently the commissar is just happy to keep throwing money at me. And the second one to make even more money. So, our next section. Uh, the laser detonator up there. The moment I pick it up, I'm going to get ambushed by a couple of marchmen. Now, luckily, I've been playing Fallout New Vegas since the day it launched. And I kind of know pretty much where everything's going to come from. So, I'm going to lay out a couple of tactically placed frag mines. Sorry, frag mines. Plasma mines. And we're going to see what happens. Right, here we go. Let's see how many of them get hit by the plasma mines. Yep, there's the stairs. Oh, yep, there's one of them. That's one at least guaranteed kill. Three more downstairs. Oh, they've hit the plasma mines there. Yep, and I think there's only one left. Uh, are you gonna come and come and fight me? Yes. No. Oh, he's given up. Oh, well, to be honest, mate, I don't really blame you. Oh, I see, he's got a bowie knife. One sec. God damn it, EDR wanted to kill him. Now he's turned into a ghost. Interesting. I seem to have the slow motion bat effects going on, but I'm still capable of running around like normal. What the hell? You know what? Just, just leave it. It's fine. This is how New Vegas works. Right, guns up to 69. Nice. Can the game stop being in slow motion now? There we go. Oh, I didn't even use these. Brilliant. It saved myself some uh, some plasma mines there. Cool. Now, let's loot all the bodies. Right, now, like I said earlier on, there's two places I want to hit still. Uh, well, actually, now there's now only one place I want to hit. But I'm going to add a few more to the list. Now, this building here has a commissary in it. I'm just going to pop in and sell the stuff I've just made from all those guys there. And there's a few more guys in there. One of them might have a sniper rifle. Uh, if not, beyond that gate. In fact, actually, if I just... Can't quite see it from here, but there's a box on top of that ruins that has a sniper rifle in it, and I know it's a guaranteed spawn, so... If I don't get anything in here, we'll try the building up there for the LMG and the shoulder mounted machine gun. And if that doesn't work out to plan, we will attempt to push on, because that next section is not a joke, and I don't want to take that... As I'm not going to take that lightly, there's a lot of things in there that will kill the fuck out of me. Oh, he just disappeared into a pile of giblets. And so did you. Ah, so my next location, the one I did actually want to hit. This building up here, there is a chance that two guys will walk in here as soon as I get to the back of the building, and they will have LMGs and potential chance of shoulder mounted machine guns. Now, the shoulder mounted machine gun is nice, but I would actually like the LMG because the LMG is a lovely weapon. So let's just see if we can get that. Right, what do they spawn in with? Oh, come on, a bit further, guys, a bit further forward. That did the job. I absolutely saw a shoulder mounted machine gun there. Don't think I saw an LMG though. Yep, that's one shoulder mounted machine gun. And you also have a shoulder mounted machine gun. Ah, you know what? I'll, t I'll take it. That's absolutely fine. I would have preferred to get an LMG, but a shoulder mounted machine gun is still an absolutely acceptable heavy weapon. It's just unfortunate that 10mm uh, is not actually as common as uh, 5.56. But never mind. Now, the next section. Okay, so that ruin over there. At the top, I'm sure if I can see from here. Not with the right shotgun anyway. Have I got anything with a scope on it? No, apparently not. 
Okay, so over there, there is a guaranteed chance of a sniper rifle spawning because there's a box up there that contains a sniper rifle every single time you play through. There's also a chance that a guy behind that rubble is also going to have a sniper rifle. The main problem with that is, there's two guys in there I need to kill first, and then there's about three guys down there I need to kill as well. If, however, I can sneak past them, I'm more than happy to accept that and, uh, and just move on. Because these, these guys will be killed eventually. Nope, never mind, they've seen me. Well, that is their own... Oh, bloody hell. That is their own fault, to be truthfully honest. You just signed your death warrant, sir. And that's a blade of the west. That is unfortunate for you, because I've got a right shotgun pointed at your fucking face. And there he goes. Also, blade of the west, worth a lot of money if you sell them on. You've got a flare gun. What the fuck are you going to do with that? Ah, cool. Right. Okay, so that's those two taken care of with, uh, with minimal damage. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so... The next section. Up and over this hill, on the right-hand side, over that way, there are three marked men. Now, yep, and the moment I got close by, they knew I was here. Okay, we're going to have to wing it then. Fuck it. Close quarters. Come at me, fuckers. No, come to me. I've got a shotgun. I'm doing this tactically, motherfucker, alright? If you're not going to come towards me, I'm going to sit here and wait for you. See? I told you. Oh, the riot shotgun. It's such a good weapon. I can't deny that. Maybe jump there. That is a trail carbine, sir. Um, that's a problem because that's detrimental to my health. Oh, come on, bats. That right there is what you call right shotgun panic fire. Now, I don't think the other guy knows where... I As I say that, he works out where I am. I really start putting some points in to sneak. Come on. You know where I am. In fact, while you're running up to me, I'm just going to do a couple of stim packs. Well, one stim pack. That's all I have. Yeah, I know. Come on. Come around the corner. Except... Is that an arc welder? Do I look like a robot to you, son? Oh, into the sky like a fucking meat firework. Oh, God, I love the divide sometimes. Sometimes I hate it, but sometimes I love it. Right, unfortunately, none of those guys are actually carrying a sniper rifle, but if I head my way up here, and just make this little jump across here, this box here contains one just under half condition sniper rifle. Which is absolutely perfect for what I want. So, uh, yeah, that is pretty much everything I need from the Divide. I can leave this crazy and psychotic place that's full of marked men and their ridiculous healing capabilities and head back to the Mojave. So let's do that. Ooh, I see a couple of sneaky ones. Uh, there. Yes, lovely shot. Oh, he turned into bits. And don't think I'm going to forget about you, mate. He hasn't even noticed yet. Oh, I love sniper rifles with hollow point ammunition. Right, so we're back in the Mojave, and it's lovely and sunny, and everything's nice and pretty. Now, um, my next objective, well, what I'm going to do next part anyway, we're going to clear the prison out, because it's the largest sort of populated area that I haven't really hit yet. Uh, I'll just sit and pop some prison guards while we discuss the next part. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing the prison, killing everyone in there, and once we've done that... Uh, I'll be moving on to, hopefully, the Mojave Outpost. Oh, you survived that. Fair play. Didn't survive that one, though, did you? Some of the textures there look absolutely horrific. So, yeah, my next objective is, yeah, clear the prison out, and I want to move to the Mojave Outpost, and then potentially Novak. Oh, and there's a level up. Brilliant. Right, let's uh, let's put everything into guns again, because I want to keep my guns going up. We need to be maximum offensiveness. And we're going to take shotgun surgeon because it really wouldn't be a shotgun diplomacy run if I wasn't making my shotgun ludicrously powerful. So uh, let's continue on with that. So yeah, next part. Mojave Outpost and on to Novak. And that's why I have a really large sniper rifle because this is my long-range negotiation stopper. Uh, people will not be able to talk to me if I just shoot them in the fucking head first. That, that is pretty much um, the plan. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to sit here, pop the rest of the guards, and uh, next part we will move into the prison and kill everyone else off. So, uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this so far, uh, I've been Zippy. Thank you very much, and goodbye.